Hey guys, this is Jordan here, and I'm happy that you're here listening, but I wanted to give you a warning today, just in case I know some of you listen with little ones in the car with you, uh, but there is a little bit of language in this episode, um, and I wanted to just warn you ahead of time, just in case you have little ones in the car, that you didn't want to hear that language. It's not too much, but there are a couple of words that are used in this episode in particular uh, that you may not want your little ones to hear. So plan accordingly. All right, let's get into it. (laughs) All right, what's up, guys? This is Jordan from the Laundromat Resource Podcast. This is show number 18, and I'm so excited for today because today we have the king of pickup and delivery service, Rick Rome, on the show today. And this interview is jam packed full of wisdom. So if you're at all interested in the pickup and delivery side, or if you're interested in the future of the industry, or you know what, if you uh, are just interested in laundromats in general, he is dropping wisdom all throughout this entire uh, entire interview. Uh, this is definitely an instant classic and you are not going to want to miss it. <clears throat> That's for sure. So we're going to get into that in a second, but I wanted to welcome um, all the new members over at the laundromatresource.com. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you're interested in joining, it's free laundromatresource.com slash join. I'll put the um, the link down in the description uh, uh, and in the show notes. So if you're interested, uh, go ahead and click on that. And uh, in fact, all the show notes will be there. Um, show notes for today are at laundromatresource.com slash show 18. Uh, So check that out. Okay, Um, man, I wanted to say a particular welcome to a couple of members uh, over from the new member introductions forum at laundromatresource.com slash forums. Uh, So big, big welcome to Paul McCary, uh, who's with CCI and uh, Card System. So go network network with him. He is uh, excited to get to know you and see if he can help your business out. Um, and also big welcome at, to Brian Ryumi. Brian, I apologize. I know that I'm butchering your name. There's just so many vowels. R-H-E-A-U-M-E. Room. Uh, you know what, Brian? Welcome, but you're going to have to book a coaching call just so I can learn to say your name. Uh, uh, But anyways, welcome. Thanks for introducing uh, yourself. If you haven't yet, go over to laundromatresource.com slash forums and go introduce yourself in the new member introductions forum. Uh, Start getting to know some people. And again, I say it all the time, but together we are better off. And that's a great way to start to get to know people or to get to know more people in this industry. Uh, to help you grow and to help your business grow. That's what we're all about. So um, go join and and go introduce yourself in those forums and then go welcome someone else who's already introduced themselves. Uh, Yeah, super pumped. Speaking of forums, Stanley over on the forum had a question I wanted to highlight today because it's a doozy and I get it all the time. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard this, um, but he wants to know, Stanley wants to know, is there really such a thing as free laundromats? Now, I know that this is a very controversial topic. I know that this topic probably interests more people in this industry than anyone else. And some people are just very opinionated on it. So I thought I'd throw it out there because that conversation is waiting to be had over on the forums, laundromatresource.com slash forums. Uh, go let Stanley know what you think about free laundromats. Is it possible? Is it not possible? Is it a gimmick? Is it legit? Uh, you know, you've probably seen some of the YouTube videos out there on it. And uh, yeah, go go have a conversation about it because I think that's a topic worth discussing. Um, so go help Stanley out. And uh, yeah, I say it all the time again, but head over to the forums uh, while you're listening to this or when you get home or whatever um, and go ask a question, go answer a question and start engaging in that community. The forums are uh, just, they're hot right now. Lots of people on there interacting with one another. So go be a part of that. Um, Man, I'm, I just, I think I'm done for now. Uh, I am excited 
to get Rick on the show here and to let you hear this interview and all the crazy things he has to say. And we're going to get to it right after this. In today's world, if your laundromat is not online, you're losing business. Customers increasingly decide who to trust with their laundry by the quality of your web presence. But creating a professional logo and website that instills trust in potential customers and can be found on page one of Google can be difficult to create on your own and expensive to purchase through a traditional marketing company. As part of our mission to help laundromat owners succeed and find financial freedom through laundromat ownership, we are launching our done for you marketing service tailored specifically for laundromats. After ranking number one on Google with our own laundromat website and consulting with many others to help them do the same, we guarantee that we can build you a professional website that ranks on page one of Google within six months. Our joint expertise in the laundry industry and over 15 combined years in website design and online marketing allow us to offer affordable, transparent pricing for a high quality web presence for your laundromats. You invest so much into providing your customers a quality laundry experience. Don't let anyone miss out on what you have to offer simply because they can't find you online. Let Laundromat Resource Marketing take care of your online presence so you can take care of your customers. Visit laundromatresource.com slash get online today for more information. That's laundromatresource.com slash get online or click on the link in the description. All right, without further ado, let's bring in the king of laundry, pickup and delivery, Rick Rome. All right, Rick, how is it going, man? Thanks for coming on today. Yeah, uh, hey, Barry, it's my pleasure, and I uh, really appreciate uh, you spending some time with me. Yeah, it's no, like, fantastic. likewise, I'm really excited about it, and I know you're an awesome guy, and you got a lot of wisdom behind you, and I can't wait to hear it, but also I'm sure you got a lot of stories. But before we get into all of that, Tell us about who you are and give us a little background on, on, on you. Absolutely. No problem. So, uh, you know, I started Wash Club uh, New York City about 11 years ago now. Um, what I quickly learned is that there's very, very limited, um, uh, what's it right here, um, customer loyalty when it comes to the self-serve business. That type of customer is very financially dependent on, on lower pricing. Um, and what I didn't like was the fact that I'm doing all these things to keep these customers. But if someone was a nickel less across the street, um, they would go there. And if I was a nickel less than them, they'd come back. So I didn't like the fact that there was limited customer loyalty. So I tried to figure out a way to increase uh, customer loyalty. Uh, and basically, that's where pickup and delivery came in. And, uh, you know, i started with myself and my Honda CRV and, and two other employees, uh, about nine years ago doing pickup and delivery and fast forward today, I'm at 24 trucks, 60 employees process close to 25,000 pounds a day in laundry. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, I want to get into all of that, but let's just back up for a second. How sure. in the world did you get into the laundry business? I get asked this all the time. People are like, it's so random. How'd you get in? Yeah, well, after I was a Wall Street guy for many years, the institutional market maker at Morgan Stanley. Uh -huh. And when I retired from the, the what we call you know, Wall Street in the street, um, I was looking for things to get involved with. And um, one thing that I did, it was hard money loans. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing hard money loans, I, I believed in the philosophy of sort of say being on the street to get the deal. I call it street businesses. And one I constantly saw all the time that looked pretty good was laundry, yeah. right? Um, so when push came to shove in uh, 09, when uh, the world was the first time the world was coming to an end, uh, during a financial crisis. Yeah. yeah. Especially um, on wall street there. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I jumped on the opportunity. I jumped on the opportunity and, um, long story short, uh, people were yield hungry. This had a good return. It was consistent. It was, rel uh, reliable. And, uh, that's how I got into it. But you know, I worked 191 days in a row, no less than 15 hours a day learning the business uh, about fixing equipment and dealing with the customers and uh, all those things. And, um, it was a challenge for sure, no doubt. 
Uh, but w the one thing like I alluded to in the beginning is that I, I didn't like the residual portion of the, I like residuals. I just didn't like that. This was a, um, like an, an annuity, right? Basically yeah. uh, I would raise my prices and if, you know, electricity and gas went higher, labor costs went higher, which they all have, yeah. it would kind of wipe out any sort of state gains there. There was no organic growth. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to start to, you know, you never want to buy the nicest house in, in the shittiest area. You want to buy the, the shittiest house in the nicest area, yeah. right? Because that's how you build equity. And um, that's what I set out to do in the pickup and in, in the delivery. And uh, sorry about that. I had a call come in. That's okay. And um, yeah, that's, 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 what, that's what got me going on pickup and delivery. Yeah. I, I mean, kudos to you for having that site to, you know, see a business that is a solid business and, and then going after it. And I see a lot, you know, I've, I've been doing, you know, interviewing different owners, uh, both here on the podcast, but also just, I've been talking to a lot through coaching and just through networking and stuff. And I'm seeing a lot of common themes of the, uh, the people who seem to be finding a lot of success, um, extraordinary success in the industry who, early on, put in those long, hard hours to really learn the business and build that business up. And, you know, you're, you're no exception, sounds like. so. Well, I'll, I'll tell you a, a quick story. My mentor in this business, his name is David Amarendo, and he's a blind man. And he's been in the laundry broker, laundry business for, oh, wow. I, I might be short at when I say 34, 35 plus years. It, it could be 45, frankly. And basically I used to, you know, c complain to him mm -hmm. saying like, I can't get it above this. I'm, I know I'm always stuck here. What do I yeah. got to do? Yeah. What do I got to do? And then I started doing pickup and delivery and that started to grow a bit. And then it started to plateau again, the same thing after six months. And, and I complained to him and then finally he just kind of smacked me in the head and said, <laughs> listen, man, I'm blind and look what I've done. You can see what you're doing. So you just stay the course and keep chopping wood and chop wood and you'll see the fruits from your hard efforts. Yeah. And he nailed it. I mean, I, I every about six months I hit a plateau. I, I get dis I get disgruntled. I get angry, like why? Um and then for whatever reasons I figure some things out. I do something a little bit better, a combination of the both. And um I go up to that next, that leg up again, next level. Um, which is, which is, which is obviously great. So uh, I'd say to everybody, don't be disgruntled uh, too much. Um, you know, you're going to get a lot of no's in this world, a lot more of those than you do yeses. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, and you know, sometimes we all need a good slap in the head to, you know, to get us moving again. So, you know, it's awesome yeah. to have somebody, uh, you know, to do that for you. <laughs> for sure. For sure. And the fact that, uh, he's impaired, uh, even had that better of a value to me, totally. uh, stronger value to me, which is like, come on, man, look what this guy's doing. It's incredible. And, and you can do better. And he told me I could do better. And, uh, he was right. And, uh, I thank him to this day. I call him all the time. Um, he's a, he's a bit sick right now, so I hope he makes it through it. But, uh, yeah. other than that, uh, it, he's been phenomenal and yes, I'm very fortunate, but you know what? Great guys like you, these podcasts, they're totally helpful. Uh, so thank you really. Thank you for this sort of stuff. Hey, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. And thanks for coming on again. Uh, but Hey, before, you know, we get too far down that alley, just patting each other's backs. Um, you know, sure. one of the things that you said, which I think is so true. And it's one of the things that I love and I hate about laundromats is that it's, you know, there is a cap at some point to the amount of business you can do with a self-serve laundromat. And that makes it you know, it, that can make it a solid and consistent business. But if you're ambitious and you want to grow, you know, your only options are to either go buy more or find another way to utilize the assets that you have with your business in order to grow to new and higher levels and expand your influence there. It is, it is definitely a CapEx heavy business. Mm -hmm. If you're going to go the route of 
what what we commonly call a roll up strategy, right? So you know, I I had the choice, I still have the choice uh, to either invest in laundries or invest in my in my business, uh, which is now pickup and delivery. Um, we were speaking prior to starting. I don't have self service anymore. I don't allow people in my laundries to do self service work. Um, I chose that because it became a tipping point where either you're going to mess up your, your customer's pickup and delivery orders because the self-serve customer is either leaving their laundry in there for 10 hours and you need the equipment or they grab the wrong card and things get mixed up and you know, blah, 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 right. All these things that can happen. So yep. I made a, uh, I made a, a, a business decision, executive decision back, uh, it's probably been five, six years now. Um, to not allow any self-service in my laundries. And it's been tremendous. Um, and it was the right thing uh, for me to do. Yeah, it, I wanna talk all about that because that's craziness uh, for one. You know, people, <laughs> people don't think, you know, I'm just gonna close, you know, my business essentially. I mean, that's like what you got into, right? You got into the self-service yeah. laundry industry yep. and it's completely morphed into something different and yep. and closed down that part of your business. So that's that's pretty crazy. Can you can you talk to me about you know I I mean I can see right away a ton of perks of doing that because anytime you're working with the public, anytime you're working with people, uh, you know, and they're coming in, they're using your stuff. I mean, they're abusing your stuff. You know, you're going to have vandalism. You're going to, I mean, just, it's a rental car, yeah. right? What do we do with a rental car? We beat the heck out of it. We yeah. drive it like a Ferrari. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I take you know, it out to fields and do, Malibu, do yeah, donuts. Yeah, donuts. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a Chevy Malibu, you know, and you're revving the damn thing up doing peel outs and whatnot and who knows. And cause you don't own it and it's a rental. That's what it's for. Right. At the end of the day. Yeah. So yes, I mean, I will tell you the, I'll tell you the cons. Let's start with the cons, right? What did I lose out on? I lost out on face-to-face -face interaction, pressing palms mm -hmm. with people, um, which I think has a, a, a big to do. Um, you know, you can diffuse customer service issues quicker because you are face to face with somebody right. versus uh on online type of thing no doubt um those are and obviously you know all, having the cash in hand um uh, is always you know mm -hmm. is always great not have to pay credit card fees um and things like that um but the pros i mean they totally outweigh in my opinion the the cons right so you know the same way you don't have to, when you're doing customer service, you know, you know, hold on, let me go back one second. Following the trend of what's happening in society and culture is, is critical, right? So, you know, mm -hmm. the same way we used to have a telephone that was hardwired um, and, and uh, what, you know, commonly referred to as a landline or it no longer exists, right? Um, people walk around with computers in their, in, in, in that in their hands that can take pictures and call Indonesia and um, do all sorts of movies and all, you know, all sorts of gaming things, whatever. And, and yeah. this little contraption called a cell phone, <laughs> right. Or a smartphone. Um, so what I'm getting at is that societal norms and cultural norms in terms of shopping and living have completely changed. Right. I know everyone wants to get dollars or quarters uh, all the time, Right. But the reality is, is more and more consumers are becoming more of a cashless society mm -hmm. um, for a number of reasons. Right. Uh, because it's it's safer. It's easier. Um, it reduces disease. Right. Risks of, of, of spreading things. Right. All those things um, are, are all there. So the, the truth be told is you, you need to follow all the trends that are happening, not just the fact that more and more people use credit cards to buy things. But also more and more people go online to figure things out. Um, they don't necessarily you can they're okay with communicating via email or text messaging is huge, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, not to say like, oh wow, what an epiphany. Text messaging is huge. I get it. But the point of the matter is, is I'll tell you, I used to laugh when I would read people 
would send you an email and it would, you know, instead of writing out P L E A S E or T H A N K space Y O U, right? Now it's P L S and it's T H K <laughs> and it's all things. And guess what? I am guilty. Yeah. I am totally <laughs> guilty of that. And I used to laugh at those. We'll call them young, you know, younger folks. Well, what I'm hearing uh, is you're turning it. into a preteen girl. Is what I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> from like maybe. the '90s. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. But those are the, those are the consumers. Yeah, those are the, that's where the consumer is. So, totally. it, it, you know, you 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 have to be omni-channel. Is is really boiled down to right? Because some people don't ever want to see your face. Some people only want to see your face. Um, some people. It's a hybrid, yeah. right? Some people will call you. Some people will text you. Some people email you. Most people will use an app, right? So mm -hmm. if you're not omni-channel in what your business offerings are, I'm not saying you're going to go out of business, but what I will say is that you're, you're missing out on a lot of business opportunities. And that is worse to me than anything else, right? Missed business opportunities is, is my biggest pet peeve, yeah. right? It, it, it drives me bonkers at, at, at the nth degree. So I don't ever want to be in that position where I can't handle, you know, Joanna, the, the 22 year old recent college grad to fill up the uh, 35 year old bachelor or Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Regina, who's 82 years old and only knows how to use a telephone and has no idea how to order online. Mm -hmm. Right. So they're all good customers. They all pay. Um, they all just need different, um, they all have different needs of communication. Yeah. And as a full suite business, and you want to be a growing business, right? Uh, you need to be able to communicate in all those languages. Plain and simple. Yep. I love that. And, and what I love is, uh, our, our, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm getting really excited just hearing you talk because our industry is notorious for not adapting, for not changing, for not following the trends. You know, we are a get in your rut and stay there kind of industry. And that's changing a little bit. There's more and more people, I think, like you, who are starting to think a little bit differently about the industry. And part of that is right now, especially, you know, life is just forcing us to think a little bit differently, um, which I think is good for our industry. But I love what you're talking about because it's, you know, it's all about change, which when you can't change anymore, uh, your business, when you can't grow, when you can't adapt, when you can't, you know, start texting like a teenage girl, uh, you know, as a, as a man, you know, like you, yeah. when you can't communicate in different ways, when you can't offer different things, you, you stop growing and you start the process of dying. And I've seen that not just in our industry, but I've seen that all over the place. Many. All Absolutely. over the place. Absolutely. Well, it's, men used to only shake hands. Now men can hug each other, right? Yeah. Well, and, not now. And, well, right. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but in, in, right? Uh, all I'm getting at is that culturally speaking, things change. And yeah. if you want to be, a, 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 in my opinion, a better, well-rounded individual, I'm not saying you got to love hugging somebody. But if you, you know, if that's your thing um, or that's their thing, it's not, it, it is what it is, right? Uh, so at the end of the day, I think that the, the wider your eyes are about all the different um, languages, communication languages, I call them, that you can communicate with, mm -hmm. um, I definitely agree the more successful you will be and uh, the, the, the more you'll grow as a business uh, point point blank. Yeah. Well, I, I love that. I mean, I think you're, you're dead on your spot on. And I think that those of us listening to you right now need to, you know, learn that lesson and continue to learn that lesson. Cause it's a continual learning of that lesson. But let yeah, me, I mean, right. You're not, I'm not the most religious guy in the world, but I never frown upon anybody else's beliefs or disbeliefs uh, it, towards using religion as an example, uh -huh. right? I mean, I think Michael Jordan was the best basketball player ever to play the game. Somebody in Cleveland might say you're full of it. LeBron James is right. Or Los Angeles now might say that. Right. But mm -hmm. you know, and, and I would never say all oh, your Kobe, you're, but you're, you know, it's okay. 
Yeah. Or Col- Colby. Yeah. There we I go. Know, Colby. Just <laughs> there's, oh, there's another one. There's definitely another one. And you know, the, the, the reality is they were all awesome. Yeah. And they're totally. all a privilege to watch and joyful to watch. Um, but they all have their different ways of getting there. Totally. That's all. And, and they're all acceptable in my book. Yeah, totally. And I love that. Let me take you back uh, to, okay, you have a self-serve laundry at some point yeah. in time. Yeah. And yeah. you're starting your pickup and delivery service because okay. you're wanting to grow and you're wanting to expand. Tell me a little bit about yeah. that experience. How did you start that? How, what was that like when you first started? Did things just take off? Was it slow going? You know, just tell me a little so, bit about that experience. Sure, sure. So I, I had one of the largest laundries in Brooklyn. Uh, it's about 6,500 square feet. I had parking for 13 cars, which may seem like nothing where everyone else lives, <laughs> but in New York City, New York, that's a um, lot. I could get $600. I could get $600 a month for each parking spot if I wanted to. Right? So that should just give you a small idea of the value of that. Yeah. Um, so that was, uh, that was that. And I was doing about 45000 a month in coin, right? Self-serve business. So it wasn't like I wasn't making, mm-hmm. you know, pretty good money. I mean, it was, a, that's, that's a lot of money. That's a lot. They might, at least it is to me. Yeah. So, um, what I got, what I got sort of say, I moved to a neighborhood in Brooklyn that was up and coming and they were just starting to build, um, you know, luxury residential buildings. And you know what? I felt that a lot of these people were service starved. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know what? I start here every day. I finish here every day. Why not go to a couple of the dormant buildings and say, hey, this is my card or this is my business. You know, if anyone wants laundry or in this, I was doing dry clean. I do dry clean as well. You know, here's the, no, here's the phone number. There was no, uh, no, no websites website, yet. Yeah. <laughs> there was no website yet. Um, there's, there, there was a website, I think, but maybe no shopping cart. Uh-huh. Uh, if I recall correctly. So, and definitely no text messages. So, um, I, I, I did that. And, and after about three, four, five months, it started, it was, it, it was growing. Okay. You got to think of laundry. Laundry is not, you know, when, when it came out, they called it was on demand, right? When people say on demand, what does really on demand mean? Right. On demand to some people mean I want to, I want you to come now, uh-huh. right? Or maybe it's I want to be able to order now. Maybe it's a combination of the two. But at the end of the day, laundry and dry cleaning is not an on-demand, true on-demand product like let's say eating or transportation, yeah. right? So we eat three, four times a day, right? Your stomach says, ooh, I'm hungry. Um, feed me so I can stop grumbling, right? And, and the food comes within an hour or whatever, right? Uh, you're, you're at work and you need to catch a flight to the, you know, you got, you got to catch a flight in a few hours. So you, you get a car to pick you up and take you to the airport. Right. Uh-huh. So there's instant satisfaction or gratification you need. Laundry is similar to like food shopping, right? You open your refrigerator and you know what? There's, there's, there's a loaf of bread. There's, um, there's some butter and there's some water. Okay. And, and you go on and, 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 and you, yeah, it's not the, the best meal, but at the end of the day, you can survive because the only available pickup or drop off, I should say, for the food supermarket was tomorrow. So yeah, okay, I can survive. I'll eat this and I'll get the food tomorrow. Laundry's similar, right? We got a thousand pairs of socks, we got a thousand pairs of underwear, <laughs> a thousand pairs of jeans and t-shirts, and you, you have enough to last you weeks, generally speaking, right? Yeah. Without having to do it like that. Yeah. Now, there are consumers who need instant gratification. I get it. Okay. And frankly, those who want that instant gratification should pay a premium for that, meaning mm-hmm. same day service, mm-hmm. right? I, I have no problems doing that. If not, here's the regular price. Done. So laundry is not, in my book, a true on demand product whatsoever. And I, I think it's more about service and convenience at the end of the day, pickup and delivery, that is. So, um, I started to grow the business and I hit a certain level and I, st- I, st- I was stuck there for months, months. And I was pulling my hair out. I was like, I don't understand. I went from, you know, zero to 50 in no time. 
And now I've been at 50 for three, four months. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? Right. Yeah. And I think that every business, every, everything in life has a cycle or has a, has a, has a, um, what's the right way? Uh, you have to cool down, right? Because if you're running your car at 85 miles per hour, yeah, it, it'll last the first, you know, you know, 30, 40 days, let's say, but after the 40, 50 days, you're starting to notice that things start to break down. Philosophically speaking, a business is no different, right? Mm -hmm. You may say, well, well, what would break down if people are ordering? Well, maybe it's the person who's taking the order, or maybe it's the van that's going to pick up the laundry, or maybe it's the internet in that guy's house is not good, or in your business, it's not, it's slow for whatever reasons. Um, I mean, I had a sinkhole. Huh. Actually, I had a sinkhole. It was the largest sinkhole ever recorded in New York City. It, it, it happened literally across the street from my facility. Gosh. It closed the street down for two years. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So imagine if I had a count on walk-in business. I've been out of business. Yeah. Right? And what was nice is since the street was closed, I had ample parking for my trucks. <laughs> so it was, made it even better. So, you know, through, you know, through adversity comes success and being able to be quickly in, in fine tune and, and navigate those channels and see those channels um, and take a risk on what you're, what you believe to be the case, mm -hmm. right? Since we're all entrepreneurs, um, you know, you got to seize that moment. And, and, and that's what I did. And that's what I did. And I think I don't, um, I think, you know, the Amazons of the world, frankly, right? Because Amazon, my biggest problem from a pickup and delivery perspective was the fact that people couldn't believe they could order their laundry online the same way they can order a pizza, yeah. right? Yeah. They just couldn't believe it. So when, when this all started to come, and mind you, this was eight years ago, things started to meticulate, go up, 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 and then boom. Right now you have apps and everything is done online and uh, people hardly want to talk to you. I mean, older people, yes, but younger kids, no. Yeah. They just want their stuff. They're busy doing their work or they chasing boys, chasing girls. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> what, what do I know? And um, I always laugh because I do a lot of, I do handle customer service. Um, I enjoy that to a certain degree. <laughs> Oops. And um, I always laugh when someone says, you know, for, I get recognized this at times and they're like, Rick, the owner. And, and, and I'm like, yeah, that's me. They're like, yeah, sure. Rick, Rick, the owner of wash club is answering the customer service lines. That's a total <laughs> joke. And it's like, uh, no, no, it's not a joke. I do yeah. do that. I drive truck. You know, it's just how I do quality control checks, right. To see what's going on. Um, so those are some of the things that you should understand and that, it, it, it isn't like a, a fire hydrant where you just turn it on and it just comes out like crazy. Yeah. All right. It takes time just like anything else. Yeah. You got to put effort and you're going to have setbacks. And the question is, do you, do you brush yourself up off and get back up and, 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 and get on that horse or do you just stay down and, and, and take your ball and go home? All right. I don't take my ball and go home. I'm, I'm very, very competitive, highly, highly competitive. Um, can't stand losing. And, uh, I, I, I fight tooth and nail for every inch I get. That's awesome. I, I mean, I see that mentality throughout, you know, the successful people I've talked with also that streak kind of runs through, it's a thread that, that goes through all of you know everybody. So that's something that, you know, if you don't have that, you need to develop it because that is, I think one of the big keys to success, not just in this industry, but in general, I think. Well, or collaboration too. I mean, listen, I, I wasn't, a lot of people say, well, that type of guy or that type of mentality doesn't play nice in the sandbox. And I agree that that used to be uh, very common, mm -hmm. but now you, you, it's, it's collaborative thinking, right? I mean, you have to understand that there are people from all over the world, all over the country coming in and out, uh, doing different things. And, and with, with this, you know, with the, with the power of the internet, you can, you touch, you can touch them all, right? In, in theory, you can touch them all. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously I can't service someone who came from Japan and is in Los Angeles, but maybe they're going to come to New York or maybe next trip they're going to come to New York and they found us some way and boom, 
right? Or maybe they stay in a hotel that we service a lot of their guests for and, and, and boom, right? So yeah. it goes back to that omni-channel stuff and being able to offer um, all those different channels to communicate with people. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I think that's awesome. And I love, love, love that. So uh, in those early days, I mean, were you, how are you getting the word out? Were you, uh, you know, doing it, man, were you taking flyers around? Were you taking out ads in the newspaper? Were you, you know, I, yeah. what were you doing? Yeah. Back in the early days, it was a lot of flyers. Definitely. Um, I used to pay my, my drivers, any, co- any employee that got us a customer, pick up and delivery customer, which is really the drivers, uh, would earn a $20 referral bonus. Oh, that's smart. For each one. Yeah. Right. So it, when they would, you know, in New York, we're, I don't know if the right word is fortunate or unfortunate, but there's many uh, six, seven story buildings. So if someone was up on the fifth floor of the walk up and they had to go up there to get the, the, the laundry, well, on the way up the flights of stairs, they would shove a flyer under every door. Yeah. Right. So, you know, flyers aren't the best. Uh, they, they hit, you know, less than 1%, but it's, it's a, you know, you can buy 10,000 of them for, I don't know, 500 bucks or whatever it is. So, you know, you, it's just a numbers game yep. at the end of the day. So those are things I w- I'm a, I used to own some billboards. So I believed in what's called out of home media. Um, but primarily digital media, uh, what is what I do now only, uh, back then I have branded trucks. Um, I word of mouth, you know, I was not shy to promote self promote. Um, I, I, I used to have my kids, uh, they were back then were in first grade. I'd had them. Um, I have these t-shirts. They say on the back, they say, smell me. Right. <laughs> so, and it says, uh, you know, wash club laundry or whatever. And people exactly got a good kick. Business. That's pretty funny. Um, I like that. I like so, uh, you know, it, we, we, we did, I gave out t-shirts and things like that. Um, um, you know, I have one other one that says, give the gift of time, give laundry, something like this. Um, so th- th- those, the traditional advertising means is how I got going. Um, and what was nice is the, my drop off customers from my laundry, man, I don't know how many of them said they're so proud to know me because they saw when I started and they saw how hard I worked and I was there every day and I remembered their names and I always made them feel welcome and all those good things. And those people were great mouthpieces for me, it, whether I knew it or not. Oh, a friend, I told, you know, I'd ask someone, how did you hear about us? Oh, a friend told me, right? Or I saw your truck driving around or, or trucks now um, driving around, right? So yeah. um, all those things are good. But if, if I was to start today, 1,000% digital media mm. all the way. You can forget about flyers. You can forget about um, billboards. Forget about radio, newspaper. I don't think it exists. It's like a fax machine. Um, I would not touch any of those. Now, somewhere in, um, you know, in the heart of Tennessee, let's say, where, you know, half the population has spotty internet. Okay. Maybe um, doing something with the PTA of the school uh, or a church organization or a religious organization, something like that, where you do a fundraising. Um, one that I love is um, I did once a local craft show. I got a booth at the local craft show. You know, I didn't have any crafts to sell. <laughs> I, I got a booth, but everybody there was local. Yeah. And everyone's got dirty underwear. Totally. Right. So that one worked out pretty good. You know, 350 bucks for a booth, I think it was. And I probably ended up getting like 20, 25 uh, customers out of it, which is pretty good. Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. You know? That was pretty good. So, um, yeah, those are some of the things that I did then. And, 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 you know, I didn't mention everything I do now, but, uh, from a marketing perspective, but I, again, slow and steady wins the race, you know, try and keep your chin up. You're going to, you're going to come across plenty of setbacks and that's, what's nice. You know, like I, like I said, I get a lot of calls from people all over the place. And at the end of the day, I have 10 years of experience about pickup and delivery uh-huh. and I've built well, we didn't get into it yet, I guess, but I had built software POS pickup and delivery software that'll allow you to scale. And 
that software is a direct reflection of all the failures, frankly, mm -hmm. I had. And then I took those failures and I made them ironclad. So when, let's say, you start tomorrow, you're not starting like I did 10 years ago. <laughs> you're starting in today's time and in today's world. Yeah. Yeah. So. I love that. And, you know, I want to get into your, your POS system here in a second. Um, but, you know, just another thing. I don't know. I'm just... I'm listening to you talk and I'm just seeing the things in you that have got you to the point that you're at. And I just, I love your creativity and your marketing and the way that you're drumming you. up business. You know, you're, you just Thank off you. the top of your head, I was just writing them down and you just, you listed off like 12 different things that you did to advertise, to drum up business, you know, in those early days. And, you know, now you know, and I, most of them failed, by the way, most of them failed, right? I mean, it, that's advertising. It's, it's, yeah. it's trying to pull that rabbit out of the hat. And it's like, is it in there? Well, I know it's in there, but when's it coming out? So you, it's your best, you have to advertise guys. Yeah. It's so, I mean, yeah, we all drink Coca-Cola, but what do you do? Did they stop advertising? No, they got a multi-billion dollar budget. Even though everyone in the world knows Coca-Cola, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You have to advertise. At least I strongly, strongly recommend you do it. And if you don't do it and you're successful, God bless you. Yeah. Hey. Good for you. Took Good a gamble you. and it paid off. Yeah. But it is a gamble if you don't. You, I mean, that's the reality of it. I agree. Yeah. yeah. I agree. So are, are you doing like Google ads, Facebook ads? What do you, what do you do? Yeah, I do. From a digital perspective, my biggest spend is uh, at search uh -huh. and email marketing. Uh -huh. And oh, nice. I am implementing some, uh, AI automation into the software. Um, and I, and I'll get into that in a second yeah. from text messaging. Um, I'm not a Facebook. Is, I haven't mastered Facebook in terms of advertising. Mm -hmm. I think in my opinion, Facebook is, uh, it's a phenomenon for sure. But when you're doing laundry, you need to be super hyper local mm -hmm. and Facebook is not, it, it, it can be hyper local, but the problem is, is that it reduces your, your number and it's purely a numbers game. So from a branding perspective, for me to advertise, it's just, I'm just going to use New York for me to advertise New York, you know, the CPM, right? Cost per thousand on uh, advertising with Facebook is cheap. It's, it's, you know, one, two, three cents tops. Yeah. per thousand impressions, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll spend a hundred bucks a month purely on branding, right? Just on Facebook. Yeah. That's just a, just, you know, people, it'll follow you around, it'll cook you and follow you around and, and things like that. And, you know, in, I don't, I don't see many people on Facebook being in the right mind at the right, you know, in the set of, Oh, I'm looking to do laundry right now. Right. As opposed to search, it's very, you go to search because yep. you want to do that then. Yep. Right, so search is really important, but here's how I view it: advertising. It, it's a basket, right? You need a you need a diversity of different avenues to reach different people. So you go to work, and you're talking. Sorry, you're going to work, and you go to um, the water cooler, and you're talking to your buddy, and you're like, "Yeah, I got a hot I got a hot date tonight with Tiffany," and. Uh, um, but God damn, I got so much laundry to do. I don't have anything to wear. Right. Or I have it tomorrow night with Tiffany or whatever. Uh -huh. And, uh, your buddy Joe says, Oh, check out wash club. Right. So Joe goes on to wash club, you know, he's at work. He's like, checks out. I says, Oh, that's cool. And then his boss calls him in and, and for whatever reason, doesn't order. But then when he gets home or when he's on his phone, um, he gets an email from us that says, Hey, you didn't, you know, you have any problems or you forgot to finish your order or whatever it is. Then he, he, he gets to the website and he goes uh, on our banner ad there on the top of the website. It says, download the app for free. And he, and he likes to use the apps. Fine. Clicks the app, downloads it, places the order. Right. So who gets the credit? Is it his friend who told him at the water cooler? Is it uh, the email? Is it when he was walking home? I didn't mention it, but he also saw the truck across the street from his neighbor's house. Yeah. You know, the, the answer is they all get credit. Yeah. It's yes. They all, they all yes. get credit. Yeah. They, they all, they all get credit. So with that being said, you have to be found again and going back. I know it's like third or fourth time I said it. 
you got to go back to Omni channel. Mm -hmm. You have to be found. So when someone tells you that it's all web-based, it's not all web-based. It's phone, it's text, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, app, you know, it's huge. All yeah. that the app is app is huge. It's so uh, 60, 70% of my sales come through an app, not a website, not a website on your phone. Okay. Not a call in, but I do get people who order on the website. I do get people who call in, no doubt. Um, those are some things that we do, but another thing we're going to do right. And uh, I learned this in my sales days in, in wall street is that your best customer are your existing customers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because the acquisition cost is, is obviously zero um, pretty much. So we, 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 we built and it, we're going to launch it probably in the next, hopefully 30 days or less where let's just say I hadn't seen you in 30 in 40 days, 30 days, whatever you haven't ordered. And now you're going to get a text from us because we're in your neighborhood and it's going to say, Hey, we're going to be in your neighborhood. Um, do you want to pick up a, you want to pick up tonight? Press one tomorrow, press two, uh, you know, no, thank you. Press three, right? So you press uh, number one, which means tonight. So then you get another text from us that says, do you want, um, you know, press one for, for wash and fold, press two for dry cleaning, press three for wash and fold and dry cleaning. Mm -hmm. Boom. They press number one, let's say. Great that will automatically trigger our system to create an order. And then you'll get an email as a customer letting you know the first available pickup for, well, the pickup is based on the day you, you requested mm -hmm. and based on the products that you offer, which is a 24 hour turnaround for us, um, you'll get it back tomorrow and no human interaction. Zero. Yeah. Right. It's awesome. That to me is awesome. Yeah. Right? That's awesome. So, now I'm getting more, potentially more out of my existing customer base, mm -hmm. right? Um, I'm continuing to hammer away at potential new customers, right? And some of these new customers are people I'm going after also, maybe they're business owners. Maybe they work at a business that needs our services, mm -hmm. yeah. right? I mean, it's, it's incredible how this thing, uh, facil um, what's the right word here? Uh, master size, the growth of where yeah. it's going. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's amazing, compound. right? Yeah. Anyone who knows anything about finance, what's the biggest, most powerful thing you can do? Compound interest. Yeah. Right? It's the best thing you can do for any portfolio mm -hmm. uh, in, 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 in any time, any place in the history of time. So this is just other ways to do it. And that's what we do at Wash Club. We, 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 we offer this to our, our, our customers and then we, we test it. We make it stronger and we make it work right. And then we we give it out to our licensees who can use it for those purposes if they choose to or not. Yeah, man, I love that. I love, you know, just the ability. And again, it goes back to, you know, changing and adapting and growing continually and, you know, and doing that with your software system is, you know, it's just going to ensure that your business continues to grow. And not only that, but the people who are using your, your system, what's it called by the way? Wash club track T R A K. And it's a full, full blown POS, uh, pickup and delivery commercial platform, um, billing, I mean, ordering, processing, facility management, um, uh, all, all built into one, one, one place in the cloud. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And, you know, at the end of the show, you know, I'll ask you where people can find out more about it. Um, so we'll get there. Uh, no problem. But, yeah. So, I mean, and you said you're doing, how, what do you do? 25,000 pounds a day. Is that what you said? Yeah, roughly. That's, I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's a bit lighter now because of COVID. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you know, it is what it is. So half my business roughly is commercial and half is um, what I call retail pick up from people's homes. Yeah. Are, are you seeing, uh, increases or decreases in, in either one of those categories separately? Or are they both up? Are they both from down? Co from COVID? Yeah, right now, yeah. From, co from COVID, my pickup and delivery is through the roof. Hmm. Okay, my retail. My commercial is uh, just a step above the toilet. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm hearing <laughs> right a lot now. of. Yeah. You know, the gyms are closed. Uh, mm -hmm. Hair salons just, I mean, again, it depends on where you live. Um, 
hair salons opened up in New York again. Um, um, you know, like spas and things opened up again, but the gyms are closed. Um, corporate gyms are closed. All that stuff is closed right now. So it's yeah, a lot of, it's a bit, that part stinks. Yeah. A lot of businesses are, you know, closed or even if they're open, they're down and, you know, maybe can't afford some of the service. So that's what I'm hearing a lot of right now of, you know, residential being up and commercial being down. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, it's just, they have to, it's what's the value of your time and you got to get high level. Right. Yeah. I mean, yep. it, I get it that these are all everyone's baby. I, I, I mean, it was hard for me to relinquish, so to say authority to do things, but by doing that, okay. That allows me to focus on the high, you know, high level stuff that really can drive additional revenues uh, into your business. Right. And it's not always perfect. I mean, I've had, I right now have, the best general manager in the world. Wendy, I love you. Um, she's the best. <laughs> Shout out, and, Wendy. <laughs> totally. <laughs> she's the best. Um, and she is, it took me six or seven tries to find a GM over about a five year period. Yeah. And one of them, one time I had a business partner at one point and I ended up buying them out. Um, it, you know, she, it, it, she's the best. And, and that has allowed me to focus on, cool in, 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 uh, additions to the software, like the, 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 the automated, you know, the AI ordering. Yeah. Right. Um, and focusing on, uh, adding other types of great stuff for, uh, the software. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and going after big business accounts like, uh, Amazon for instance. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, it, it, all those things have allotted all that time has allotted me this. Now other folks may say, Hey, you know what? I uh, good for you, Rick. But you know what? I enjoy uh, going for long walks on the beach with my wife. I want to play golf uh, twice a week. Um, I only want to go to the laundry for uh, three three minutes on on Saturday uh, to get my money um, and get the time clock stamps or something, whatever. Right. So from that perspective, to each their own. Um, but I I have a strong feeling that many 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 more people many more uh, sophisticated, um, driven individuals are getting into our space, which, you know, I believe that high, you know, high tide raise, rises, raises all boats. Yep. Right. Yep. And I think, like you said, back in the time, there's a lot of, uh, uh, lethargic, uh, operators, mm -hmm. um, who think, such a thing. And I, I have a friend at Eastern funding, uh, who calls it the zombie mats, uh -huh. right. And they don't put any love into it. And, um, there is a difference. I mean, it, think about it. Do you want to wash your clothes in a dirty, filthy laundry? It's like going to eat in a filthy, dirty restaurant. Yeah. Why yeah. in the world would you want to do that? Yeah. It's worse than that. It's like cooking your food in a dirty, filthy kitchen, you know, that's yes. Yeah, totally. Yes. Totally. Yeah, so. And that's how a lot of laundromats are still to this day. I mean, it's changing more and more. Like you said, I think more sophisticated people are coming into the industry and realizing it, it can be a legitimate business where it's been run, I think, traditionally more as like a mom and pop uh, type thing. So I, well, I also think that with the inventions of different softwares, mm -hmm. right? You like, you know, a POS, for instance, right? Um, or a card system in the laundry, right? Whatever using you, you should embrace technology, mm -hmm. right? Just like you should embrace, uh, marketing, right? It's, it's an, it's a, if you think of it as evil, fine, but it's a necessary, it's a, it's a necessity. It's a necessary evil it is. at the end of the day. Yep. And I don't think it is as evil. I think is as, a, as, a, as you know, who's my, you know, who my best salesman is, it's this guy named Google. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. He's my best salesman and, 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 and it does a bang bang job and he's, and he works 24, seven, 365 and never complains. Yeah. Well, you know, what makes marketing evil is when you're saying things that, <clears throat> that aren't true when you're deceiving people, because if you have a service that's helping people and you want them to know about it, there's nothing evil about that, right? It's when you're right. taking advantage of people. It's when you're not offering good service and you're manipulating people or you're tricking people into 
giving you money for something they're not going to receive. And that's what makes it evil. Um, but it's a tool like anything else, right? Marketing is just a tool. It's not good or bad. It's how you use it. And, you know, if you're providing a great service and you're doing 25,000 pounds of laundry for people who otherwise, you know, wouldn't be able to do it or would have to figure out a different way to do it. Or just don't want to do it. Yeah. Or Or just just don't want to want to do it. Right. I mean, we all have, we all have lawnmowers. We all have coffee makers in our house but we have someone cut our grass and we go to Starbucks for our coffee. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, I, sh- I, I can tell you in New York, we don't order Domino's pizza. Well, we don't even have Domino's. I don't think in New York, but you don't order Domino's pizza because it's good. You order it because it's convenient. Yeah. Right. I mean, guys, McDonald's is doing deliveries now. Yeah. McDonald's. Yeah. Starbucks. I mean, th- that's what I'm trying to explain guys. It, it, the writing is so clear on the wall. It's like you have to cater to your customers' needs. And again, I know there's going to be people who are going to be like, well, screw them. I'm going to do it my way, and this is how I want to do it. And I don't, I don't want to do it. No problem. That's fine. But if you're wondering why your business doesn't grow, out, you know, and raising your prices is not a growth, right? That's, that's, that's not, that's, that's incremental growth. That's not organic growth, right? right? True growth is organic, meaning you get new customers coming from somewhere else. And I think you said it earlier in the cast saying like, you know, you can, you can only attract so many people from in a four block radius, right? Mm-hmm. There's, there's, they're not going to be able to build anymore there at the end of the day. So if you think that the guy on the other side of town is going to pass seven laundries before he gets to yours and, and not stop at those because you have air conditioning or yours is the cleanest or you're of the highest price or whatever it is. Yeah. You're, 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 you're what we would say is Meshuggah, <laughs> which is Yiddish for crazy. Okay. It's just not going to happen. So how do you get that person on the other side of town? Pick up and delivery. Go and down. I'll say to you, and I'll say to you, you better not buy another store until you look into pickup and delivery. Okay. Don't risk that much money. Try it out. Yes. It it has different challenges just like anything else. Okay. But at the end of the day, your ROI will be, if, if you're, if you're a winner, right. If you work hard, if you think like, Oh, I'm going to just buy this, you know, it's like buying Excel and being like, Oh great. Now all my problems are solved. I have Excel. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) No. Right. No, you got to actually use it and you have to create these formulas. And, and at the end of the day, it's just a tool. It's a crutch to help you get stronger or more importantly, really release time back to you. To you so yeah. you can take that and focus on getting new business. Or if you want to work on your golf game, work on your golf game. But at the end of the day, you got to be proactive. You can't sit on your hands. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's just, it, it's, it's just not going to work. And it, you know, and I learned that I used to have numerous businesses and when you focus, you know, if you got four businesses and you focus 25% of your time on each one, well, what do you think is going to happen? Not much, not much. Yeah. But when you give a hundred percent of your effort towards one of those businesses, watch how much it will grow. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I, I think that's, that's super wise. Uh, you know, it made me think, how much time do you spend on your business? You kind of mentioned the time. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, back in the day, it was a lot. Uh, excuse me. I still spend a lot of time on my business. It's just, I don't spend so much time inside my facilities anymore because, well, one, because I can do things remotely. Right here we are having yeah. an interview. I believe you're, you're in Southern California. I'm in yep. New Jersey. Yep. So, uh, you know, you can do more. So I utilize technology to allow me to do more things. And so, Wendy. And well, oh, and no doubt, Wendy. I mean, I got, <laughs> I got, a, I, I got a couple of Wendy's over there. Would thank God, yeah. uh, they're all awesome. Um, but at the end of the day, um, th- those folks allow me to go after those high level things yeah. and and do interviews like this or, or whatever it may be. So, in essence, I am a, I am, I every day, every day. Uh, I, I, I eat, breathe and whatever else you want to say there, uh, laundry. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, in my business, because I, I, I really enjoy it. And, and more importantly, I think everyone can do it. I mean, 
I'm not like, I'm not that smart. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not smart. I laugh when people call me an expert on things. I kind of laugh sometimes. <laughs> and I'm like, are you, are you talking to me or the guy behind me? Right. I'm always <laughs> looking over my shoulder. Um, but this such is the reality, but I'm very, uh, I, I'm fortunate, right? Cause I built something from the ground up. I truly love and cherish it. And I think that I want to spread that uh, opportunity to everybody. And, and, you know, I, I think, I don't know if he was your first podcast, but Ross Dodds in Los Angeles is one of those guys um, who really took my advice and, and, and used it. And then when he ran into a couple brick walls here and there, he asked me for support uh, or advice. And that's exactly what we do. And uh, I'm, I'm proud. I'm, I'm super proud of all my guys and girls, frankly. Yeah. I, I'm, I love that. I'll link to, uh, I'll link to, jo, uh, to Ross's, uh, podcast too. If you haven't heard that one yet, you have got to hear it, uh, because his story is insane. Oh. And what I love about it is that he, I mean, basically worst case scenario when he bought his first laundromat. And now, you know, if you looked at him now, you would never know that that happened to him because he is, uh, he's just killing it right now. He's doing awesome. I went out a couple of weeks ago to his new location that he's getting ready to open up uh, here pretty quick. It's amazing. And it's just going to be incredible. In fact, we built a website, um, you know, for him and in that location and it's, man, it's awesome. And so, yeah, I, I, yeah, your his perseverance is amazing. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And it's a testament to him and, and what he's gone through and how he continues to, to go higher. Um, and, and we love all those stories. We love all. And, and every guy and girl listening or, or, or interested, you can do it. You totally can do it. You just, you know, you got to focus and, and, and accept uh, problems when they arise and, mm-hmm. and, and brush yourself off and get back up, you know? Yep. Love that. Well, hey, we have a segment that we like to call Secret Sauce. Listen up. It's the Secret Sauce. here and uh it's basically you know what's what's one thing that's working well in your business right now that other owners can utilize to help improve their business and specifically i guess for you in this uh you know this interview what's what's something that's working well with your pickup and delivery that other owners can implement um i would say i mean Technology is the easiest, lowest hanging fruit that yeah. you guys, anyone can, can, can get involved with. Okay. I mean, it, it, I don't know what else I can tell you about the fact that being able to know what you did today or what you did last week or what you did a year ago and, 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 and you know, and a snap of a finger to help you pro- forecast what you're going to do or what your goals are. Yeah. Um, is it, it's, it's, I, I can't imagine any, I can't imagine not doing it. Right. So I, I'll give you a perfect example. When I built my first version of my software, um, it used to take us about four hours to write down the orders because we had it on a spreadsheet. We write it down, we print it. We had to call them to remind them that we were coming a race. They're not answering this, that, and blah, 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 blah. Um, when we got our first version of software, which allowed us to um, take all the orders in the dashboard, this is about eight, nine years ago, take all the orders in the dashboard uh-huh. and basically hit the print button and it would come out. I mean, that saved us four hours of time. So right? crazy. Yeah. I mean, and I know it wasn't like I invented something that was incredible. It was just like, I just organized it, I guess, better. Whatever. I don't know how you want to say it, but um, those efficiencies, and what you do with those efficiencies, mm-hmm. right? So if you're a golfer and you want to play four more hours of golf, I guarantee you, you're going to get better at golf, right? Yep. I guarantee it. So just like if you were selling, um, you would, you know, it's four more hours, so to say, of selling that gives you another opportunity, yep. right? So I would say that's, uh, that would be, I don't know if that's a secret, uh, but that's something, uh, I absolutely 
would tell anybody to get into the, you know, get back, get into the 21st century. <laughs> well, you know what? Sometimes I feel like in our industry, that is a secret, <laughs> you know, to <laughs> utilize technology to, you know, run our businesses, because I think a lot of people are just not utilizing technology in their businesses to any degree other than having a coin operated machine in their laundromat. So I do think that that's the secret. <laughs> so yeah. and I think it's, I think it's great too, because again, you know, propelling towards the future is, um, you know, if, if you can get on that train now, you know, because our, in, our, our industry is slow moving and it's slow to get there. And so if you can get on it now, which is still, you know, surprisingly, it's still early for us, you know, on Way the technology early. front. Way early. I mean, guys, it's like being on a freight train, right? A freight train moves slow, but eventually it will get you to where you're going. Yeah. Right. And, and, it, and it can move perhaps faster if you start to um, utilize it properly. Yep. Right. So if you just sit in the freight train and wait, you know, 32 hours till you end up wherever you're going to end up fine. So be it. But as you start doing that more and more often, you'll learn that there's other trains that might get to you there faster, or in this case, other vehicles, yeah. whether that may be a car or a bus or a plane that might plane, get you there jet. much quicker yeah. jet. Right. So it's, it's, it's that simple. It's, yeah. it's really that simple. So I, I totally hope that everybody um, can start to, to do that because that that's like a no brainer. Mm -hmm. You know, and I get it. Guys don't want to maybe report all their cash that they take. I, I, I get it, but that's their business. Uh, I, 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 I don't, I don't do that. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know what it's like. I think it's, it's silly because you're being a penny wise to be a dollar foolish. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I think that nailed it right on the head. Yeah. Right. You're missing so many other opportunities that you can be getting involved with, but you don't realize it because you're, 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 you're bogged down in that other garbage. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, I kind of see it like a, uh, almost like utility bills for a laundromat. You know, it's like, you don't want high utility bills, but you kind of want high utility bills because if you have high utility bills, it means you're doing a lot of laundry, you're doing a lot of business and you're making more money. Yes. And yes. you know, if your goal is to minimize utility bills, well, you might be able to do that, but you're going to, lose out on business, you know, cause you're not doing as much laundry. It's funny. You should say that because I've always said that laundry guys, it, you know, I get it. Focus on the bottom line. That's important. But if you raise the top line, the bottom line will move up too. Yep. <laughs> yep. So it's not just the top line, I guess. And it's not just the bottom line. It's a combination of the two, oh, but man. most laundry guys are so fixated on just, you know, cutting out this, that, or whatever. And in essence, it's actually not, it's not a good idea. Yeah. You, you can never downsize your way to wealth, right? You, you have to increase yeah. your capacity to grow your wealth. And, yeah. you know, that's a big mindset shift for a lot of people. I know it was for me, um, you know, so we have another section we call pro tips. Pro tips. And pro tips is directed towards new newbies, people who are maybe looking to buy their first laundromat. Do you have any tips for them uh, to get them started in the right direction? On the laundry business, on the self-serve laundry business, I would say don't think of it as a passive investment, okay? You can, and many do, okay? But this is a multi, multi, multi-billion dollar industry. and in my opinion, you, you got into this because you're tired of working, you know, for, for the boss, you yep. want to be your boss. Be your right? boss. So yep. if, 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 if you're thinking that I'm going to do this as a passive investment, I would tell you that it's probably better to buy real estate. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I would tell you. Um, but from that perspective, I would say, you know, it, be a sponge, talk to people. I will say that people here, are super duper friendly. They're open to talk about almost, at least I am, uh, and it seems like you are as well, yep. to talk about really anything because, um, you know, we all know how to make hamburgers, right? But the good chefs, the good barbecue pit masters, they know exactly how much salt, exactly how much pepper, how much, uh, I don't know, how long to grill it on each side and so on and so forth, right? So, you know, you make, 
take a whole handful and I might take two handfuls, but the guy who knows takes it's two pinches, uh-huh. not the whole thing. Right. So I would say the same in the laundry business. Who it's you, there's a lots of competition. Nobody is your customer. Okay. You don't own any customer. You can think you own a customer, but at the end of the day with all the email lists, all the text message lists, all these different ways of finding uh, people on lists, they'll end up on a list. No if, ands, or doubts about it. Mm-hmm. So what I would tell you is, you know, be there, focus on that, grow your business from that perspective, work hard, be honest, okay? And if you can do it full time um, from the beginning, not much better because you'll see that improvement. Um, and you're, you're, you're risking a, a nice chunk of change at the end of the day. Um, so understand that time is money also. So make the best use of your time. Just like I tell people who wants to do laundry, you know, like you can give it to me and pay me $40 or you can do it your, and, and it takes you one minute or you can do it yourself. It'll cost you 20 bucks, but four hours of time. So the net net is uh, $20 in your pocket, but four hours of time lost. Mm-hmm. So if your time is worth five bucks an hour, I have a broom you can push all day, all night in any of my facilities. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Yeah. Right. So know the value of your time and 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 make it make it happen. Yep. I love that. Great advice. Hey, real quick, I forgot to ask you this, but it sure. made me think of it. What does it cost to do a pound of laundry in, in New York? Pick up uh, we have sure on our software we have tiered pricing, so it depends on where you live. Mm-hmm. But um, it's ironically you would think it'd be super expensive um, because it's New York city. We probably actually have the, some of the lowest prices in the country. Oh. Um, uh, it, 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 it ranges from a dollar 23 a pound to a dollar 63. Okay. Yeah. That is pretty low. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's, it's just, there's so many, I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, there's a laundry in New York, uh, not uh, Manhattan, every... but in, in, in the boroughs. I mean, there's one, I, I'm on 63rd and, and 5th Avenue in Brooklyn, and there's between 63rd and 60th Street and 5th Avenue, which is three blocks, which is basically once around a track, uh-huh. okay? Uh, there is one, two, three, four laundries. <laughs> Plus mile, mine. man. Plus mine. Oh, gosh. So five. I mean, I'm not a self-serve laundry. So yeah. when I closed down the self-serve, they were so happy with me. Oh yeah. They loved me. They, they, they were carrying me on their shoulders around the neighborhood. They loved yeah. me. It was great. You know, thank <laughs> you. Thank you. How to get popular um, in the laundromat industry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so from that perspective, um, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's, well, that's that. Yeah. And it makes a lot of sense too, because there's a lot of competition. I think people are surprised by um, a lot of the LA vin prices. A lot of times people in the Midwest are charging like two, three times more than what we can charge here, but there's just a lot more competition. So it drives that pricing down for sure. So, well, you also, you guys build out, we yeah. build up. Yeah. You guys go up. I know. Right. And you go out. So, you know, you still have some you know, considerable travel time, yeah. uh, potentially to get to where you're going. And, and it's pretty dense. I mean, California is 40 million people. It's an incredible economy. I believe it's like the fourth or fifth largest economy in the world. Yeah. I know. Okay. It's insane. Um, I mean, that, that's a pickup and delivery heaven, long yeah. California. Are oh, you yeah. kidding me? Oh, it's a heaven for pickup and delivery. So, um, you know, places like that. And, and listen, we even have places, uh, we have a, a, an operator up in Lehigh Valley, which is basically Allentown, Pennsylvania. It's uh, the Poconos Mountains, which is you know about an hour and a half west of New York City. There's no train lines, um, and it's you know about maybe fifty thousand people spread out over God only knows how many miles. Um, and he's he's one of our best operators actually yeah. for pickup and delivery. <laughs> he he kills it. He kills it. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I mean, that goes to show you can kind of do it anywhere too, you know? So who likes, who likes doing laundry? Nobody, nobody. Exactly. You know what I hate? And those that I hate do folding are laundry. cuckoo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? The it's only crazy. thing that I wish that, that you would do and other pickup and delivery would do is come put it away also after they wash <laughs> it, dry it, fold it, you know? <laughs> but, I would tell you that, 
that has a liability risk out the wazoo. Oh, I'll yeah. pass on that any yeah. day. <laughs> any day. Believe me, we, we, we get people who want us to go inside the apartment. I tell all my yeah, drivers, yeah, I said, don't you step a single foot inside no. any apartment. Yeah. That's the last thing we need. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I hear you. No, that would be nice. And, uh, yeah, I just, you know, I, I, I hope guys and girls read the trends. And, and, and it's not just the trend in the laundry business. It's also the trends in society that's happening, you know, realize that you use your phone a lot to do certain things, many, many, many things. It's like, again, you're, you're probably much younger than me, but when I used to go on road trips with my family, you know, we'd have the Atlas. I mean, I could read a map, right? Oh, yeah. I tell my Thomas dad, which guy. Direction. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, which road do you travel? <laughs> I, I used to measure out how many miles it is. I'd take the ruler on the map and the car and you know, the whole nine yards. I figured which truck stop we're going to stop at and all that uh -huh. jazz. Right. And, and, and now shit, you just can throw your, your bag, you know, throw your stuff in a duffel bag, jump in your car, type in, uh, Los Angeles and, and it gives you the map. It gives you the map. All the way the there, yeah. <laughs> All the way there. Yeah. Right. So uh, I, that stuff is is that's tech, that's technology. I mean, you remember MapQuest? MapQuest used to go online, then you could print it out, and print then that out, was your yeah. guide instead uh -huh. of having to carry that you know this book that's this big and and and, and that long, right? <laughs> and, and so it's just natural, guys. It's like a payphone. You see payphones? Where no. do you see a payphone? No, Superman's right? extinct, it, man. He can't change yeah, yeah. clothes anymore. It's right. He's 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 in a world of trouble. Yeah. So all those things they happen in right in front of you. Yeah. They're they're happening every day in front of you, right? I mean, when you used to get an apartment, you know, when I was just got out of they didn't have internet when I was in college, but when I first got out of college, I had dial up, and one of the things we would ask is, do you have you know, are you wired for dial-up, right? Or your ethernet or whatever it was, right? And, you know, 10 years before that, it was like, do you have a garage door opener to open the garage, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, why, why washing your dishes versus a dishwasher, right? Hanging your clothes outside on the, going full circle here, on a clothesline versus putting it in a drive, right? All those inventions, all those things save you time. Yeah. And technology, a POS, my POS, in my opinion, um, will help you do all of those things. What you do with that time is up to you. Love that. What a, what a great sales pitch and great tagline, too. You need to put that all over your website and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I got one more question for you before we wrap it up. Um, sure. Do you have any, uh, do you have any resource recommendation? I mean, we are a laundromat resource over here and we like putting resources in people's hands. Do you have any resource sure. recommendations, maybe a book recommendation or any other kind of resource that, um, that might benefit other owners either personally yeah. or in their business? Uh, this podcast would be great. Oh, number man. one. Look at you. Okay. Oh, man. Yeah, we're going to have to back on now. I'm, I mean, I'm you're, shameless. I'm you're shameless. in. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I knew that's um, why you were one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's no specific book. Um, I, I, that I know of, you know, there's some out there, there's some videos out there, all that jazz. Um, I would tell you the, the best advice I would tell you is, do, you know, do what mom and dad taught you. Say please, say thank you. Um, try and be kind to your neighbors. Um, all those things. And it's not easy because customers, you know, the worst part of our business is customers. Oh, yeah. Right? I mean, <laughs> it's, it's the worst. Yeah. But we, we, all, we, we, we all stand on that same ledge thinking about, I hate them, but we need them, you know. Um, so I would tell you the best thing to do in that regard is just, you know, always take a deep breath. Think about that. They do serve your purposes, but if they come out right at you, like, well, I'm the customer, it, you know, I, and I, I'll, sorry, I'll give you this note. I had a, I had a great two, I had a, two great customers today, uh, two different problems. Well, yeah. One was a customer who's been with me for, you know, a year, year and a half. He spent a lot of money with me. Um, he, 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 he basically, he's an older gentleman. He canceled or changed his delivery order and it was by mistake, but he said, Oh, I didn't touch it. I didn't do it. It's the system. 
da, 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 da. And, and you know, I kind of nodding my head. Yes. Yes, sure. 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 And then I explained to him and then he got to the point where he's like, I'm sorry. I'm a little stressed out. We have such a great relationship. My daughter's sick and blah, blah, blah. Mm, and in yeah. the hospital, I said, I understand. Understandable. Don't worry, sir. We'll take care of our stuff. You just go do what you got to do with your family. Right. Versus I had another lady, first time customer spent $520. She had 270 pounds of laundry, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't even know how in the world you get to 270 pounds of laundry, it but nonetheless, or something. yeah, maybe, <laughs> right? Nonetheless, um, we told, you know, she starts complaining about how we don't call or how come no one uh, told us how much it was going to cost. And then I said, well, ma'am, we don't know how much it costs until we get it back to our place to weigh it. So how would we possibly know? And we have over 90,000 customers in New York City alone. We don't have the time to call each guy and girl to say, hey, your laundry weighed this much. Do you want me to charge you? Yeah. We, we, we can't do that. It's just not good for our business. Well, I don't care about your business. I'm the customer, blah, 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 blah. I said, okay, well, I think this will probably be the last time you're going to be a customer. And that's fine. Just get your credit card updated and we'll charge it and we'll make the delivery on time. If you do it by three o'clock today, if not, then, you know, we'll wait till you do that. Right. And I'm sure they're going to dispute it and all those other things yeah. that, that, that people do uh, because they take it personally. Yeah. And it's yeah. not a personal attack on, on anybody. It's just, these are our rules. This is how we do it. Right. You don't go to your favorite restaurant to eat dinner at three o'clock if they don't open till five and then complain to them. Why are you closed? <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, my hours are well, five to 10, not some people do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. But yeah. It, yes, yeah. yes, yes, they do. And it's like, what do you want me to do for you? Yeah. So I would say, uh, those types of things happen. They happen to everybody. Yeah. Okay. And it's just part of the business. Yeah. Well, can I just say nobody has ever recommended as a resource to be kind but I love that because I mean, like you said, this is a people business, you know, the customers are the worst part of the business, but I would also say the customers are the best part of the business because the majority of the customers, at least that I interact with, and I'm in rough neighborhoods, the majority of them are great people, you know, and the rough, yeah. the worst parts customers are, you know, it's, it's a few, it's a relative few and um, but I love the be kind thing because, you know, when you're kind to people, it makes them want to do business with you. And I, that's right. Great, great recommended resource, even though it's not a traditional right. resource. It, well, like it's that. not. And I'm sorry, I don't have no, a no, specific no. book or anything I, to point to, but I, no, I love I, it. that's just, it's just common to me to be like this. And, yeah. um, and I'm, and, and guys, I'm not always this way, believe me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You can, you know, there's been plenty of times where I have made mistakes. Like before Yelp became Yelp, I used to, I wouldn't care about it. I could care less. I'd scream at people and Yelp started to gain popularity back in the day. And you can see some of my reviews are because of it. And it's because of me at the end of the day. So I need to, I need to keep my, uh, my lid shut sometimes because I do take it personally when I shouldn't take yeah. it personally. Yeah. And the thing that blows my mind even, even more is that it's a New Yorker that had to come out with be kind to other people. <laughs> um, well, hey, Rick, you know, it's been awesome to have you on. It's seriously incredible stuff. I've been eating up every single word. I know that people are going to grab a lot of uh, just a lot of wisdom from what you had to say. And you had great perspectives. Um, on everything that you talked about, especially, especially your number one resource recommendation of the podcast. Um, that was probably the best part by far. <laughs> uh, no, but I seriously appreciate you coming on and sharing this and uh, just, you know, loved everything you had to say. If people want to get in contact with you, either just to ask you about how you're doing stuff or to ask you about your POS system, what's the best way they can do that? Uh, they can send me an email at Rick, R I C K at wash club track w a s h c l u b t r a k dot com uh with happy to talk to you at the pos we're certified google adwords experts we're email marketing experts so um you know we're happy to help you guys you don't have to use our software for us to do the marketing for you either um so we're just there to build relationships like you're doing now and uh, hopefully we can um 
make those materialize into bigger, better things. That's, that's what we're here to do. And, and everyone can do it. Everyone can do it. Awesome. And do you guys have a website for Wash Club Track? Yeah. Uh, wash, it's washclubtrack.com. Okay. okay. Yep. And, and uh, it's no problem. Uh, yeah. And I'll put the link to that and also the email address in the show notes and the description. Um, so, you know, if you're listening to this and you want to get in contact with Rick talking about his POS system um, or, uh, you know, just talk to him about the way he's doing business, he's doing some pretty cool stuff. Um, yeah, the, the email address and the link to his website will be in the description and show notes. Rick, thank you so much again for coming on. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your uh, Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. You too. Take care. Bye-bye, man. How cool was that episode? I mean, Rick just brought so much wisdom. He brought so much passion. He brought so much uh, just enthusiasm for the industry. And he just, he gave a lot. Um, I know I learned a ton. I took a lot away and I want to encourage you as I do every week to pick one thing that Rick talked about and figure out a way to actually implement that uh, in your existing business or in the process of uh, getting your first laundromat, wherever you're at in the, in the process, go implement one thing mm -hmm. And if you can't think of anything, hey, you know what? A good place to start would be just go be kind. Uh, I loved that advice uh, of his recommended resources. Just be kind to people. Uh, I love it. Um, so go out there and be kind this week. And uh, man, grow your business. Do awesome. Thrive. And take those steps toward your financial freedom through laundromat ownership. I am looking forward to seeing you again next week. Come hang out with us on the forums. And man, come be a part of what we're doing. All right. We'll talk to you next week. Peace.